Hello everybody, my name is Kat Bowser, your resident fantasy therapist, and welcome to my channel. Those of you who are returning, welcome back. I'm glad to see you again. And those of you who are brand new, my name is Kat Bowser, and I am a licensed therapist, and I'm also a author currently working on my first debut novel. So this is my channel where we discuss all things writing, fantasy, character development, world building, and everything that falls in between, or maybe outside of those parameters. <laughs> So this week, I'm actually on a second video. Um, you can see the first video in my feed, and I'll also give you a link to it down below, um, where we're talking about character development, or more specifically, my personal tips for developing characters. So I use a um, series of questions in um, six categories, which I call the five W's plus one, which is who, what, where, when, why, and how. And last week, we talked about the who and the when, so this week we're going to talk about the where, the what, and the how. And those of you that are paying attention, you may have noticed that that leaves only why left. There's a reason for that. Why gets this category all by itself, and we'll address that next week. So with that being so the first question is the where. And I actually like to have two sections to where, a macro level and a micro level. So on the macro level, this is essentially where does your character live? in your world of your story are there continents are there countries are there nations and if so where is your character in relation to everybody else in your story do they live in a large t city do they live in a small town do they live in a country that is torn by war what is the major surrounding area for them and I think this is also important to keep in mind, especially the relation to everything else, because most of the time when we write stories, our characters do not stay in one spot. They usually move around. They're usually traveling to and fro, going on a quest or whatnot, especially in fantasy. And while I don't believe you necessarily have to have a map, I think it is extremely helpful to have one, especially if we're talking about a lot of travel time. A map can help you keep in mind, okay, it's going to take me this long to get from this point to this point. And it tends to keep your characters from having what I call transporter syndrome, which is where they suddenly appear in another location. And then later on, you're talking about how long it takes to get from one location to another. So it's just a way to kind of help you keep your facts straight, for lack of a better word. I also personally think it's kind of fun. Um, the other thing that it can do for you is it helps you to kind of keep your world semi-believable. Um, with fantasy, you have a little more leeway, but you still have certain rules. There's still certain environmental, um, no, that's what I'm looking for, environmental musts that you have to abide by. Um, for example, if you have an area that is a tundra, it's not automatically going to turn into a hot desert. There's going to be a transition period. Usually there's going to be a drop in elevation and a map can kind of help you keep that in mind. Um, I personally make one for my stories. I usually make two. I make one on elevation and I make one on rivers, forests, towns, and all the other major points so I know where they're at. Um, I typically start doing one by hand and then I use a computer program to do the rest and if you guys are interested I might do a, um, a video on that later at some point. So that is the major macro where. Now the micro, this is where I think it, people tend to overlook things and I think unfortunately it can hurt your character if you overlook it. So on a micro level, the where, I'm talking about where your character was born, where they grew up, what is their neighborhood like, what is their surrounding environment that they're exposed to every day, what is that like? And the reason that this is important is one, it gives us an idea of where your character is coming from and what they're accustomed to. And then culture shock can be a lot of fun when you're throwing characters into situations that they're not familiar with. But in regards to psychology of a character, um, we actually call environment the invisible mutator in that it can actually affect your DNA. And I'll give you guys a good example of this. Um, there was an experiment done well, actually, it was more of a, an investigation because for because of ethical reasons, we can't do an experiment where we actually manipulate these factors. Um, but there were a, a bunch of Russian children who were originally were 
um, born and grew up in a Russian orphanage. And during this time, they were ex they were born completely healthy, but they were exposed to very little light. They were kept indoors, was not were not exposed to a lot of natural light. Almost 90% of them, by the time they were two years old, had gone completely blind. And the reason for that is that when we are very young, our brain go, um, goes through and it gets rid of neural pathways that we don't use. So in this case, because their eyes were not getting a lot of stimulation, their brain determined, okay, I don't need these. And so it actually erased their optic nerve. So this is something that I think it's important to keep in mind in stories because the environment your character grows up in is going to affect them in some way when they get older, depending on how old they are when you have your story take place. So a character who has grown up, let's say, in a privileged lifestyle, um, they have plenty of food, They um, maybe they're in the royalty or the ruling class or whatever um, you want to use for that for your story. Um, there's a possibility that they might develop gout if they have a lot of um, access to a lot of very rich foods. It, it is actually called the rich man's disease because it usually develops from a poor diet that generally you're not going to get if you have if you don't have a lot of money. Um, there is also the concept of if your character grew up among the ruling class, they're probably going to be more educated. They're most likely going to know more about how the government works. Typically, people who, grow, who grew up in lower class, they are typically less educated. Not always, but typically because of the lack of opportunity. But the trade-off is, is that usually if you have a character who grew up in, let's say, a very poor, let's say like a farming community, for example, they may not know necessarily how to read and write. They may not know a lot about a mathematics. But I would not want to be stuck with anybody else if I was in a survival situation. <laughs> because these people are usually very, very good at survival. They know how to adapt. And that's something that you can use to develop your character as well. So these are the aspects of the where that I think are important to keep in mind when you're developing your character. The next part, let's talk about the what. So the what is essentially what has to happen to this character by the time this story is done. What is the overall goal that you want to have by the end of your story? Usually we have plot points in mind like, okay, my character has to meet this girl, they have to go kill this dragon, or they have to uh, hunt down the evil vampire queen or whatever it is that your story is. There are plot points that this person has to go through. And I'm going to add a link in the description below to a video by Just Right, and they bring up a very good point in that there is um, your story and then there's plot, and they are two separate things. And the difference is, is plot is what happens. So what are the actions that are happening? What are the things that have to occur for the story to end? Story is how your characters develop because of the plot. So story to me is more interesting but plot is well you gotta have the plot first <laughs> because you can't really decide how your character is going to change and develop if you don't know what they're going to go through to get to that point so that is basically the what what is pretty simple um usually people don't have a lot of tr trouble with the what they usually have very strong ideas of okay i have to have this happen 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 um, but I also encourage people when you're doing the what to not only think about um, the plot, but also think about the story. Even though you have to have the plot to do the story, you can start to plan out, okay, if I need my character to go through, let's say, um, developing maturity through this story, what are some points that have to happen for him to get to that, um, to get to that realization? Maybe they need to go through some trauma. Maybe they need to... Um, be put in a situation where they don't have all the answers. And those are little things that we can develop during the what planning session. So the what is essentially your very, very short outline, very short map. And it can also kind of help you to determine, okay, who are really going to be my main characters? Who's going to be my secondary characters? Because if you have a secondary character, but they have most of the plot points, I might reevaluate, see if they're actually a secondary character. All right, the last section we'll talk about today is called the how. And the how I divide into two sections as well, strengths 
and skills. And the how is essentially you have your goals, you have your plot points and your story points that your character has to go through. Now, what do they come essentially equipped with to accomplish these things? And I divide it into skills and strengths because they are not the same thing. Um, a lot of times people would lump them together, but um, let me kind of divvy out for you what makes them different. So skills are things that your character is capable of doing. So um, let's say, for example, your character is a very good artist. They know how to draw. They know how to paint. Um, or maybe they are very good with a sword. They're very good at swordsmanship. They know how to fight. Um, that would be a skill. And this is also a section where I like to lay out what don't they know that they might need to know. Um, like, uh, I'm, I'll, I'll use an example from uh, my story, Coexist Division. So I have a character who starts out as essentially a country boy. He doesn't understand or, under, or know a lot about manners and high class and all that kind of thing. So at first he is doing very poorly when exposed to situations where manners and class and status are very important. So as the story progresses, that is a skill he has to obtain and he obtains it through friends, he obtains it through mentorship, but this is a skill he does not have at the beginning. However, he does have strong adaptability at the beginning, which is why he can pick up this skill so easily. So that's, that's one example from, from my stories. Um, then we go to the strengths. And this is actually my favorite part of character development, is the strength. Strength is what your character is. So a, so a skill is what they can do, a strength is what they are. So a skill may not necessarily always be usable. Like if your character is a great painter, that's great, but it's not really gonna help them if they're on a journey through the wilderness. But if your character is very creative, that will help them. If your character is very adaptable, that will help them. If your character is very um, enthusiastic, that will help them. And the difference is strengths never go away. Skills can be developed and learned, but strengths do not go away. They are always with your character. That You may have to devise different ways to show them. There may be different ways that they improve upon them, but they're always there. And I think the best way that I know of to develop a character's strengths is I usually start actually with the skills and I go backwards. And the best way I can think of to describe that is, um, let's take the example I used earlier, that you have someone who is a painter. They're very good at painting. They're very, very good at drawing. So what I would do is I would take painting and I would look at, okay, why does this character like to paint? And usually that will lead me to the strength. Like as a general rule, someone who likes to paint, it's because they like to express themselves. Maybe they're emotional, maybe they're creative. And there you go, there's your strengths. And that's actually a good uh, segue into the video for next week, which is going to be the big one, which is on the why. And why is motivation. And that's the reason it has its own video, because there's a lot of stuff that goes into motivation, and it can make or break your character. So that is all I have for you guys this week. And I hope to see you guys back again next week. As always, if you guys enjoy these videos, please let me know. Feel free to subscribe. I will try to put up a new video every week. Um, I am a full-time therapist, but that is my goal, to get it up at least once a week, preferably more. And I look forward to seeing you guys again then. And if you guys have any suggestions or ideas that you might want me to cover, please let me know. And I will see you guys then. Thanks.